Speaker Nancy Pelosi joins me now from Capitol Hill. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for being with us today. It's good to see you. Uh, the you. president said that there will be more deaths, but that the virus will pass, that it is time to reopen the economy. And as we see hot spots, hot spots spreading across the country, do you agree with him now that it's time to focus more on what he sees as getting back to normal? No, what I think we must do, and science tells us, is that we must have testing, 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 tracing, 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 and, and have a, a, a a number, an idea of how our country has been affected in all communities across the country. That's why I'm so, we're all here working on putting again uh, the next uh, CARES 2 bill. It's about testing, tracing, treatment, and uh, isolation, uh, dis, uh, social distancing, and the rest. Right away, rapid and robust testing so we can see and take a measure of what is there and and not to do so in a way that one day they have a task force the next day they don't one day they have a volunteer corps the next day it's uh, looking like it's a a handmaiden of, of good friends of the white house this let's forget about what they're doing because they have been on a bad case and ever since to what you're saying about china yes we want to know how this started but we want to know what the president knew and when he knew it and what his administration did or didn't do about it. That's for later, after action review. But we cannot continue uh, to try to save lives and livelihood, indeed our democracy, on the strength of what the president said last night. I, I, where our bill is well, about testing, and I'll tell you more about it if you wish. I'm good. No, I do want to ask you more about that. But first, let me ask you about Dr. Fauci, because there are some indications we have not seen him and Dr. Birx as part of the task force uh, front and center at the White House, at least in, in at least a week, I think, or more. Uh, let's talk about Dr. Fauci and whether or not he could appear before the House. We know that he's supposed to appear before the Senate, but the White House, Mark Meadows, will not let him appear before the House. Donna Shalala, on an earlier hour right here on MSNBC, said as a former HHS secretary and, as you know, a member of Congress, said it's up to you whether or not the House subpoenas Dr. Fauci. Do you, do you plan to subpoena Dr. Fauci to testify? Well, we're in court right now, in the Supreme Court, as a matter of fact, on the rights of Congress to have oversight over the executive branch, three co-equal branches of government. And uh, it, it, Dr. Fauci, I would hope that Dr. Fauci would say things in public uh, that we wouldn't need him to be subpoenaed to say about how he sees things going. I, I feel sad for him and anybody has to stand in that, um, that task force and practically validate what's coming out of the president's mouth except for an occasional uh, clarification. So uh, again, uh, we want the information. It's clear the administration is afraid of the truth. And the President of the United States to say that the Congress, the House, is a bunch of haters is so beneath the dignity of the office that he holds and so distant from the, from the uh, seriousness he should bring to a matter of life and death of so many people in our country. Here we are, National Nurses Day and Week, the President's going to do a proclamation, but we are unworthy to praise and thank our first responders unless we give them what they need. Uh, we, they need to have uh, the personal protective equipment uh, and that's why we have, in addition to the testing, we have a big uh, allocation for state and local government. These people are risking their lives to save other lives and they may lose their jobs uh, because of the economic uh, uh, consequences of the coronavirus. So I think we have to really recognize science truth, fact, data is where what will take us out of this. That's why we're talking about the testing. So we want to save the lives of the American people. We want to salute our heroes with our state and local. That's a tribute to the caregivers, the police and fire first responders, emergency services, transit workers, uh, uh, teachers, 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 and the rest, custodians, all who come in contact with this in terms of risking their lives to save other lives, and now they may lose their jobs. So we would hope that he would join in something like that. But we have to have a strategic plan. We have to plan, testing, 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 tracing, tracing, tracing. We have to have a plan that reaches everyone in our country with the allocation of resources to do so, 
and the, well, the show there is a plan. So, so when you're asking people to dist social distance in the rest, they see it as part of a plan. We haven't seen a plan yet uh, out of this White House except uh, well, speaking a plan of, for every day so you can quote them. Well, speaking of some of some of the plans that uh, that they've done already, uh, there's reporting that there were a lot of issues with Jared Kushner and his volunteer force. You just referred to that, that the Oversight Committee, House Oversight Committee is looking into uh, political influence, uh, favoritism, contracts being awarded improperly, ventilators not being produced, protective, protective gear going to political favorites. Um, what can the House do to look into any of that? Well, all of the committees have their own oversight responsibilities, but our new select committee chaired by Mr. Clyburn uh, is a committee that will be looking at how these dollars are spent. Uh, one of the examples from that so-called volunteer corps, whatever that thing was, is, uh, is that uh, uh, somebody knew somebody who said he had X number of ventilators, uh, uh, referred it to the state of New York. Uh, they awarded a contract, and there were no ventilators. And we hear that again and again with masks and the rest. So we just want to make sure that the hundreds of billions of dollars that are being spent to the tune of trillions now, but hundreds of billions spent uh, for these purposes is not waste, fraud, abuse, uh, price gouging, or profiteering off of this. Uh, so that, uh, in an overall um, uh, guidance, is what the committee will that, that new committee will be doing. It's not and about oversight of what the president knew when and where. That's for another day. But for this committee, it's about how we go forward. And what about Dr. Bright? He's going to be testifying the whistleblower whose complaint alleges a lot of uh, mismanagement and improper science, political influence, through political influence from the White House and pressure on him. And he says retaliation, which sidelined him. So sad because this is a, a really respected scientist doing the job, and to have a political interference into science when lives are at stake. This is nothing for a theoretical down the road. Wouldn't it be nice if we had? It's about the here and now. And uh, so again, uh, Congresswoman Eshoo, chair of the Health Subcommittee uh, on Energy and Commerce, and the chair of the committee, Mr. Plum. Th th next week, they will have a hearing about those uh, allegations that have been put by Dr. Bright. But understand, he is a person of the highest integrity and experience as a scientist. BARDA, the organization that he heads, is there to be in the forefront to get uh, science. Uh, 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 that we, we, we anticipating things in addition to responding to them, and that the White House would interfere, as that interfered in this volunteer thing, is really quite tragic. Because look, we all want to come together. We want to work together. We want to forget this or save that for later, or what's so important about that or whatever it is. But the fact is, if you undermine science, if you underfund testing. Uh, if you exaggerate uh, uh, the, the opportunity that is out there for the economy at the risk of people dying, that's not a plan. Death is not a economic motivator, stimulus. So why are we going down that path? Why don't we? You know, everyone's eager to, to get out. And we think to unlock the lockdown is to test, trace, and uh, treat as well as uh, isolate and social distancing. And when the science tells us that we can do something differently, or to be socially distant, wearing your mask, doing things in a way that is appropriate, but not cheering people on, going with guns and swastikas uh, to the legislature in Michigan and saying these are really good people. What I don't understand about some associated with the task force is how the, the concern that, that that happened and that it's dangerous and these people can take this home with them and hurt their families and all the rest, but they never say to the president, don't, don't look fondly on that. That's not supposed to happen. It's in defiance of the guidelines you're asking people to uh, uh, honor, and yet you honor those who are in violation of them. So again, how can we find our common ground for the funding, for the testing, for, the, uh, for honoring our heroes, and for putting money in the pockets of the American people? We have to do that more me, effectively and, and 
and, and with more money. Let I also want to just a, add one more thing, thing, our I democracy. Your time. We have to have our money for our democracy, for our elections. Uh, this is very essential. For Small men money to compare the big, yes. Well, the, the uh, voter protection but, for vote by mail and, and those who don't want to vote by mail. Let me ask you quickly, uh, you mentioned masks. Should the president role model when he's out in public? Uh, the vice president has said he made a mistake, frankly, when he went to the Mayo Clinic and did not follow their guidelines. Should the president wear a face mask when he's out in public or some covering? I think the, the uh, president, I mean, it's a vanity thing, I guess, with him. I don't know why it would be vain, but anyway, it's a vanity thing. Uh, you think as the president of the United States, you would have the confidence uh, to honor the guidance that you are giving others in the country. Yes, he should have worn a face mask. But, but the, it's really another indication that as we tell everyone to wash their hands, 30 seconds, soap and water, top and bottom, wash your hands, hygiene and sanitation, very important in fighting this. Apparently, the president has washed his Sorry. hands of this. He's just washed his hands. He wants a the task force is here today, gone tomorrow, no mask. Why should I have a mask? I'm president of the United States. We have a real problem here, but forget it. Let's not make that important. Let's make important what we can do next, working together uh, to honor our first responders, our heroes, to uh, test, 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 to find the true extent in all the communities in our country, and to set lives, livelihood, and the life of our democracy. We can do that, and we can do it working together. I'm very and proud that our first four bills were bipartisan. Well, so. would you put those priorities, your priorities, you've made it clear what they are, on the House floor for a vote before you have an agreement with the Senate and with the White House? That would be a, a, an option that we have, and that's up to my caucus, and we're in a series of calls in one way or another, in smaller groups, bigger groups, committees, uh, and we'll have a whip uh, call today. Uh, but I definitely will present that as an option. And what we're doing is very, Madam I think, Speaker. appealing. The, the, let me just say, the governors, Democrats and Republicans, Republicans and Democrats, mayors, county executives, all support all support the, uh, the state and local, our heroes bill. Scientists universally say we must be testing. So this is nothing controversial. It's science and it's honoring those who are risking their lives to save our lives but may lose their jobs. I think that's bipartisan. You want to send a support. message to, uh, before I let you go, do you want to send a message to an 87-year-old Supreme Court justice who just participated in an oral argument from Johns Hopkins uh, and was, you know, right in the front lines, still in the fight? With not only my message, but the message of so many people that I've been texted on the last, uh, uh, since yesterday, uh, to her. Uh, we thank her for her values. We thank her for her courage. We thank her for her strength and determination. And, uh, you know, we, we, what we do, I mean, she is just absolutely magnificent, a real God truly blessed America uh, with the service and leadership of justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.